OK, so you possibly need one of those seven-seater mini MPVs, but you don't particularly want one. What you want is something that can occasionally carry seven, but isn't too big, has plenty of luggage space when you're not using the extra seats, is cheap to run, looks good, and doesn't shout out your family status every time you park it. What you want is, quite possibly, a Peugeot 308 SW. Rather curiously, Peugeot doesn't have a proper mini MPV unless you count the van-based partner TP, which is rather surprising given that PSA partners Citroen have quite a history with the things, but perhaps not illogical. Peugeot insists that there's quite a strong market amongst buyers who want most of the benefits of mini MPV motoring, together with all of the style of a compact estate, and they're probably right. The Mark first experimented with this with the 307 SW, an estate version of their 307 family hatchback that provided a full-length panoramic glass roof and a couple of extra seats in the estate compartment good for uh, kids or on short journeys non-rugby playing adults. Presumably it sold quite well because the whole idea has been repeated and refined with this car, the bigger and better looking 308 SW. It's certainly hard to fault the range of engines being offered with the 308 SW. The entry-level petrol contingent employs Peugeot's VTI technology, which uses variable valve timing to adapt the combustion process according to the demands being placed on the engine by the driver. Range highlights include the entry-level 1.4-litre engine that has 95 brake horsepower, and at the other end of the roster, a 1.6-litre THP engine good for 175 brake horsepower. In between, there's a 1.6 VTI with 120 brake horsepower and a 1.6 THP, the one I'm driving here, with 150 brake horsepower. And if you alter it in automatic form, you get 140 bhp. But then you don't buy a car like this to hair around the lanes. More important in a car like this are things like uh, refinement and ride quality, both areas in which this 308 SW excels. Body roll is well controlled too, which is important if you don't want to send uh, the kids green around the gills if you're running late for the school play. Now this may be a compact estate, but it's less compact than most. Peugeot has decided that it needs to be capable of accommodating a third row of seats in the rear compartment here. And unless you're an adult not going too far, these are really only suitable for kids which means that as a seven-seater MPV, the 308 SW trails the pack, but as a compact estate with some extra kids carrying capacity, it's very competitive. Now, I can fold this third row back into the floor very quickly, and if I do, there's 674 litres of space here under the load cover behind the second row. If I fold the second row as well, I get 2,149 litres of space in this compartment. Now let's put those figures into some kind of perspective. Audi's A4 Avant claims to be the biggest estate in its sector, yet it can accommodate no more than 490 litres behind its second row of seats. The 308 SW isn't just a 308 hatch with an extra glass house attached to the boot area. The wheelbase has been increased by 100 millimetres to give extra legroom to the rear seat passengers. And these rear overhangs are 124 millimetres longer to create that headline grabbing luggage compartment space capacity. The glass panoramic roof is now 27% bigger and extends over the heads of the rear seat passengers giving the cabin even more of an airy feel. There's also some nice touches. The rear hatch can now be separately opened in the glass area so that if you just want to chuck in some sports kit or some light bags and you're in a car park and everyone's tight around you, you don't have to open the whole rear tailgate. Prices range in the 15 to 20,000 pound bracket, so there's no real savouring over a conventional comparable mini MPV, despite the fact that in theory at least you're getting a slightly smaller car. You are getting a more stylish one though, and uh, one that really doesn't seem to have many direct rivals. Yes, you can get comparably sized estate versions of cars like Ford's Focus, Vauxhall Astra, Renault's Megane and Volkswagen's Golf, but none of them come with the option of seven seats. In terms of the price premium over the normal five-door hatch, you're looking at five to six hundred pounds over the entry-level S models, 
and maybe up to just over a thousand pounds if you're going for a plusher variant. Equipment levels are pretty good. You get power steering, rake and reach adjustment on the steering wheel. You get uh, electric front windows, remote control central locking with deadlocks, a CD player, electric mirrors, all the things you, you generally need. Seven airbags are included and 308 SW buyers can add to that tally with rear side airbags if they want to. You also get ABS brakes with EBFD and EBA. Don't you just hate acronyms? Uh, what that means is you get electronic brake force distribution and you also get brake assist for extra braking during emergency stops. Peugeot is proud of the fact that some of the best aerodynamics in the sector have been achieved with this 308. A drag coefficient of 0.29 will mean little to most buyers, but the resultant uh, slippery styling and fuel economy advantages should strike a chord. The greenest engine choice is the 1.6 FAP HDI particulate filter equipped diesel, if I can get all that out, and that manages 57 miles to each gallon and dips under the 130 grams per kilometre level for CO2 emissions. The 136 brake horsepower 2 litre HDI diesel, also with a particulate filter to clean up its act, manages almost 50 miles to the gallon, while the uh, 1.6 litre petrol turbo engine with 150 brake horsepower, that's the one I'm driving here, still manages 38.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, which is far from disgraceful. Even the 175 brake horsepower petrol turbo version of this engine manages over 36 to the gallon. Uh, insurance groupings range between uh, 6 and 13 for the main models and CO2 emissions are, are anywhere between, between 125 and 185 grams per kilometer. Choosing a new car is never easy. After the decision to have a kid or buy a house, it's the next biggest financial decision you're ever likely to make and the consequences of getting it wrong can be costly. The Peugeot 308 has established itself as a solid if unspectacular choice amongst those who appreciate its stylish cabin and great engines. The 308 SW adds some serious extra practicality to that mix and is the most class competitive 308 derivative that it's possible to buy. In short, it puts one over on its key compact estate rivals by dint of its sheer versatility. Choosing the right 308 SW isn't that easy though, with some very good petrol and diesel engines on offer, at least it's hard to make a bad pick. Our choice would probably be a uh, 2 litre HDI 136 if you're looking for diesel or this uh, 1.6 litre petrol THP 150 engine if you're looking at petrol power. For mini MPV owners who very rarely use mini MP versatility but would like to have it in some form at least just in case, this car makes a, a sensible pick.